With the Auction Insights reports in Google Ads, you can see what competitors are showing up on the same search results pages that you are. There are a handful of interesting metrics where you can see how often they're showing up, who's outranking who, but some of my favorite ways to use Auction Insights go beyond those basic stats. So in this video, I wanna show you a handful of different ways that I use Auction Insights in my accounts beyond just the stats that are on the regular page. For this video, we're gonna be in a live client account because otherwise the Auction Insights reports wouldn't have any data to show. So unfortunately, there's gonna be a handful of times where website names are blurred out. You might not be able to see some of the information there, but you'll still understand how the report can be useful. And we'll try to make the examples as easy as possible to follow, even if some things are actually blurred out. So to get started, First, I want to show you where the Auction Insights report lives. It now lives up in the Insights and Reports section under Auction Insights. And this is what your Auction Insights report is going to look like. You can see here that we have the display URL by domain. We have the competitor for this one blocked out because it's going to be a little bit telling of who our client is. But every time you look in a specific account, that account will show up as you. So that makes that a little bit easier. But here you can see the impression share metrics, overlap rate, position above rate, and a few other metrics. I'm not gonna go through those in this video because Joe already covered them in a previous video. So if you wanna know what all these numbers are, you can check out that video at the top of the screen right now and Joe will walk you through them. But instead, I wanna talk about using the information that's in this report and how to get even more insights out of it. So first, the easiest one, you can see who your competitors are for your account. Right now we've got one listed and that's a little bit telling. Right now we've got the one listed. I can tell you for sure it is spot on for who this client is. But one thing I wanna make sure that we dive a little deeper into is there's no way this brand only has one competitor. So while it might seem easy to stay at the account level and then jump into Auction Insights and see who's there, a better way to use the Auction Insights report and the way that I always use it is by campaign because all of my campaigns are broken apart by groups of keywords. They're usually pretty similar. Ad groups have slight variants on them, but for the most part, all the keywords in a single campaign are pretty similar. So let's hop into one campaign up here. I'm gonna pick one that I think has a decent amount of volume. And just like that, now we can see a ton of different competitors for the same time period, same account, but I'm only looking at one campaign. For whatever reason, Google does not group all of the information for the campaigns and ad groups in your account to be visible at the account level. What you need to do is review the campaign and ad group level to get a better understanding of who's competing with you and where. For a little behind the scenes, this line item is the same competitor that we saw at the account level. All of these other ones are brand new. If we go to a different campaign, now we have even a new set of competitors that is different than the ones that we just saw and different than the ones that were at the account level, that one does not show up here. So depending on where you are in your account, take a look at the campaign and even ad group level and see where your competitors are bidding with you and where they're not. Now, the next thing I like to do is start to segment the data that we have in these auction insights to get a little further information here. I'm actually gonna go back to a previous campaign because here we have a little bit more competitor volume. And like I said, I wanna start segmenting that data. So it's gonna be up here, click on segment. I'm gonna come down to time. And just because I've already got it for the last 60 days, I'm gonna click month. Just don't want the report to be too big. But here we can start to see the trending impression share and other metrics for each of these competitors. For us, you can see that we got more aggressive of this time period. We had 33% impression share in April, almost 45 in May. In June, we're up to 46. Experian also increased their impression share. All the others stayed the same. They were all less than 10%, but it's still interesting to see how brands are either getting more or less competitive over certain time periods. This can be applied to a longer time frame. Like I said, I'm only looking at the last 60 days, but you can look back at the last year, segment things by month, and see who has entered or exited the auction and start to get an understanding for which types of keywords people are leaning into and leaning out of. Again, review these at the campaign and ad group levels, not just account, 
to make sure that you see where competitors are starting to creep in. The good one for this is to review your brand terms and see if they're getting more or less aggressive on your terms. So you can decide what to do about bidding on their terms. And if you want a little bit more insight into that thought process, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now as well. There's one more segment that you probably saw when I had this button open, and that's device. Here we can see how not only our ads are showing up impression share wise on different devices, you can see how competitors are doing it as well. Right now, Experian is bidding a lot more on computers. They're not nearly as active on mobile phones and tablets, but that kind of mimics what we're doing here as well. They have only 17 percentage points on computers, less than 10 on mobile, but we have 49% on computers, 34% on mobile, so the gap might be about the same, even if their data doesn't look as compelling. But this can be really interesting if you find a section of keywords that you're struggling to convert on mobile and somebody has really high impression share on mobile or certain areas where you might not be bidding on mobile devices, but you see that your competitors have a lot of high impression share there. Maybe you need to improve your mobile experience because there seems to be an opportunity there. Otherwise, they might not be bidding so high. Now, the last two ways that I use the Auction Insights actually don't have anything to do with the data in the Auction Insight report itself, other than the brands that are bidding against our terms. So for this, I'm just gonna copy this URL just to make it easy for myself later. And now I'm going to jump into a competitor research tool. We use SpyFu, so I'm gonna jump in there. And now I'm just gonna paste in the URL from the competitor that we found in the Auction Insight, click Enter. And now we can get an understanding of experience organic and paid keywords. We can start to see the traffic flow that they have from each. So they had quite a decent amount of paid traffic in the July, August, September of last year period. And they've been kind of scaling down ever since then. You can see that they have an estimated $3.9 million Google Ads budget. That's probably pretty accurate. Experian is a very big brand. But we can see kind of the main overview. What I like to do is pop down to keywords. So down here, we can see what their main organic and paid keywords are. You can view all of the paid keywords. We do not pay for a super industrial option for SpyFu, but we can start to see a number more terms come up here that could be a good fit for us. So this is one of the ways that we use Auction Insights. What keywords are our competitors bidding on that we are not? So this is one of the ways that we use the Auction Insights report is to come here and see what all keywords this brand is bidding on. Now, if I were to take a really quick analysis of this, I would say Experian is probably not bidding on the right terms because none of their keywords here make sense, but ours do. All of the keywords that we're bidding on are a good fit for our account. And Experian might just be showing up in some sort of broad match situation and might not actually be the right fit. But let's say that they are, just for sake of the next section. And for that, I'm actually coming over here to the combat tab. Now, the nice thing is SpyFu, even though I only put in one brand, will populate two more brands for me. And again, for sake of argument, we're gonna say that we're in the credit score arena here. One of the best things that I've come to find is when you get three headliner brands that are clearly the right fit for this, coming and finding all of the keywords that they share among the three domains. This means that all of these brands show up for these search queries when they're entered into Google. This is a great place for you to find new keywords and make sure that you have good coverage on the type of core terms. But also, you can start to find keyword sets that only two of them have, or even the keywords that are only unique to, let's say, checkfreescore.com. It shows that they have 942 keywords that they are showing up for that their competitors aren't. So maybe these are good opportunities for us to start to bid on and see if we can try to steal some of that impression share from these brands on high quality keywords. So as a quick recap for the ways that we like to use the Auction Insights reports, we wanna find out who our competitors are at the account level, campaign level, or ad group level. And we wanna make sure that they're competing with us in places that make sense. Again, you'll have different competitors show up for each of those different levels within the account. So make sure that you know who's competing with you where, so that you'll actually understand which portions of your business they're trying to compete on and where you might have an opportunity and a leg up if they're not showing up there. Use the segments available in the Auction Insights reports to find any trends over time. Are competitors getting more or less aggressive on your terms? 
Are there new brands entering the market or have previous competitors just completely left? Is there anything you can glean from that? And then which devices are they targeting? Are they showing up more aggressively on devices that you're trying to shy away from or vice versa? And why is that? Are you taking advantage of the gaps that they have in their targeting to reach the right types of users because they're searching for the right keywords, even if your competitors aren't showing up? And then lastly, I showed you how we use SpyFu to try and figure out if you're bidding on the right keywords. Sometimes there are brands that show up in your auction insights reports that don't seem to make sense. So maybe there's a double meaning to some of your keywords, but you can also take those competitors and find which keywords they're bidding on that you're not. Maybe start to steal some impression share from them in some campaigns where you might not be showing up in their auction insights reports. These might seem like pretty easy processes. We find that they're great to do every once in a while, maybe once a month, once a quarter, depending on the volume, but they help you keep your finger on the pulse of what your competitor behavior is. So you can either lean into or out of certain trends and make sure you're getting the most out of your campaigns. If you have any other questions about the Auction Insights report or anything else in the Google Ad system, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.